Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special election edition of News Now. I'm Roger Colton. Between now and Election Day on April 6th, Franklin Tucker and I will be interviewing candidates in townwide elections. Today, Franklin and I welcome Ann Mann, who is a candidate for the Belmont Housing Authority. Let's get started. Franklin, you've got the first question. Sure thing. So, uh, Ann Mann, <laughs> you're an outspoken person on many issues uh, in town, including housing. Um, as uh, you know, you're trying now. You're a candidate for the Housing Authority, which is which is the largest provider of affordable housing in Belmont. How do you preserve that amount of affordable housing uh, and or even grow it? So uh, my goal has been to grow it ever since I was elected to the Housing Authority five years ago. And um, I don't know if you'll recall, but right before Obama was elected, there was a real crash in the economy. And in order to handle that, we had um, Obama came out once elected with what's called shovel ready jobs to create jobs in the market so that people could recover and Cambridge very wisely already had schematic designs put together of what they would do were they to receive money in order to build federal dollars for uh, building more units on their housing authority. Because they had already done all the, the, the due diligence and the good work, they had a plan to present when no one else did. And they were one of the first ones to receive federal funding. So it didn't cost the town owner anything or the or the state, it was all federal funds, and they built some beautiful additional housing in Cambridge. And I don't know if you happen to drive past the units in Cambridge, but they look as, as good as everybody else does. So you think Belmont should have a, a similar proactive I've, design? So it's not that they should, it's that we've been working on it since I've been on the Housing Authority, specifically the last two years, we've done a remarkable amount, amount of work. Uh, we have had people come in. We've got money from CPA funds in order to do some research and work with some developers and some architects on some of the plans. And what was interesting, we had a, um, a wonderful person on our housing authority, the director before was Jackie, and she was looking at all sorts of grants at the time because there wasn't a pandemic as there is now, which could increase our funding. And, um, and what we learned is we were mainly working on Sherman Gardens. Sherman Gardens is property for our seniors, and we have no elevators in those buildings. And we know that's an aging population that's going to need to have more handicap accessible units. So that was our first goal. Now the village, which is all our veteran housing is also in, in some rough shape because it's been around for years and we have a limited amount of capital that we get from the state in order to fund those. So what we did is we, um, we were introduced to a grant that was coming from DHA that would potentially allow us to develop both units. So we started to change our strategy and then COVID hit. We kept working on programs while COVID was here, but now we believe we have some really interesting plans that we could potentially show to use the pandemic funding to build more units in Belmont because we have a 10 year waiting list and we absolutely, absolutely need to take care of people that are struggling. And not yeah. too many years ago, Town meeting voted to use CPA funding to help upgrade the electrical systems at uh, what I call Veterans Village. Uh, right. Uh, what was that an appropriate use of, of town funding, given that the housing authority, even though people often think of it as a, a town entity, is really a state funded agency? Well, what you want to remember is that these houses were originally built for the veterans and they do have some historical value to Belmont. We've had them for several years. And uh, the reason that I think that that was appropriate is because the reason we needed to change the electrical is because we saw a clear and present danger with a fire hazard in all of the units. Now, again, I mean, beyond just wanting our families to be healthy and safe, there's also a position that we were taking saying that in the event of a fire of these units, it would certainly ruin the structure. And therefore we felt that we could approach town meeting and ask them if they would be willing to allow us under these circumstances to replace the electrical. And they agreed to. Now, um, it's very specific on the bylaws about what you can use CPA funds for. 
And that was that we felt because we were absolutely preserving the structure by changing the electrical, we felt that that was in line and so did town meeting. Town meeting voted and they approved. Now, there's other circumstances that are there that I don't believe qualify for CPA funding. And, um, and we have had some issues with, we have drafty windows, we have older windows and things like that. And, and we have to wisely use state funds or dream come true we are able to access some of the state funding and actually really begin a much grander rebuild renovation project. All right, and uh, you, you were talking about um, <clears throat> preserving uh, the affordable housing that we have, uh, the, yes. uh, the housing authority uh, properties. Uh, um, there's not much land in Belmont to build any typical um, large projects for a housing authority. Is there any chance for uh, more innovative, smaller purchases, such as uh, two families or building a two family on an open lot uh, to increase the uh, supply of uh, uh, housing authority uh, uh, apartments? Yeah, well, Franklin, you know my dream. Um, my dream <laughs> is that we would have housing authority on every single street in Belmont that at least one resident on every street would be someone from the housing authority instead of pushing them into every corner of Belmont where they're not seen or noticed. Um, and, and we actually do manage to do that in a way because we have residents here that own multifamilies like myself that have rented to Section 8, that uh, Section 8 families are people that get reduced rent. It's similar to housing, except they're not actually living in the, the properties at the housing authority. Um, but another point I want to bring up is that we actually had been talking about trying to raise the height limit in Belmont so that we could build up Sherman Gardens and we could build up Waverly and, um, and increase the height. Because if you look at the Bradford, that was able to pass the planning board and our zoning and get allowed for rebuild. And my dream would be that we could increase our our height limits on our properties so that we could add substantially more homes. And then it, I actually wish it could look like the Bradford when we're all done with it. But yes, my the other goal that I have would be for my residents of Belmont who are kind and generous and, and some of us are able to help other people out to, to be generous and consider if you have a two family and you have a second unit taking somebody that might otherwise not get to be here and allow them to have their children go to the Belmont public school systems and, and you know, have our great public transportation at Waverly or at Belmont Center. That's, you know, that's living the dream. And it, it's kind of fun and interesting to talk and think about producing more affordable housing for the town of Belmont. The fact is that the housing authority is a landlord. It's the largest landlord in the town of Belmont. Uh, what, what do you bring to the housing authority to address those nitty gritty day-to-day -day operational or management issues of being a landlord to 250 some households? Well, it's a little complicated, actually, because when I first got on the housing authority five years ago, um, I don't know if people know, but I sell real estate. And before I put a property on the market, I bring my painters and electrician and people in and we do some work and um, get them fixed up. And my thought was when I joined the housing authority, if I learned about units that needed a little upkeep, I just send my team over for a day and try to splash it out and make it look nice and then leave. It turns out that's not the way it works. We have a staff that has a certain job and their union and they do the work for each of the units. Uh, I believe I'm a, I'm a pretty good segue because I have, I made friends when I ran for Selectman 10 years ago over at German Gardens in Waverly and many of them are still there. And then the village, I happen to know quite a few people because the sports teams, my kids were on the clubs they were on in school. And so I feel like, they have an ability to talk to me about their concerns in a little bit of a different way than, um, than going directly to the housing authority. And so, and, and I can bring it up at our meetings, but the other thing that really helped was getting that community together. 
and starting um, an association of our residents. And so they come to our meetings now and they've been coming now for a couple of years. We have them online since COVID, but they, anyone can join us and hear what the projects are that we're working on and at the same time discuss their concerns about what they'd like to see done at the units. And it feels much more like a team than a landlord and a tenant. So Ann, um, many residents in town, especially new residents have a vague, very vague idea that there is public housing in, in Belmont. What do you, what could you bring or what would you like to bring in terms of just, um, just an acknowledgement of, of public housing in Belmont, but also an understanding of what public housing is in Belmont? Right, well, I want full integration, right? So I don't just want people to know about it and know it's over there and that some of those students go to school and some of those people are older and you know that they have family. And I actually want the community to become part of our housing authority. I wanna host events there. So I received a letter the other day from a resident. Um, we had a uh, Henry Tapia passed away and he had a son that lives at the housing authority and we did a honk party for him. So for his birthday party, he was turning four and a bunch of us drove through. And as we drove through, we noticed that the condition of the lawns, I mean, it's it's still early spring, spring started yesterday, but it looked like it could be a little bit more cared for. And we have the Belmont Garden Club, we have Belmont Helps, we have, um, Lots of neat organizations right here in Belmont. And so I thought it might be interesting and fun. And I talked to Belmont Helps and some other organizations to see if we might have, you know how you have uh, Porch Fest in Belmont and we would have a band in our front yards and people would show up. I was thinking that we have bands at Sherman Gardens, at the Village and at Waverly, and then invite our residents to come there and then get to know the residents I know we have COVID now, but you know we're all getting vaccinated. Our unit, uh, our seniors are being vaccinated at the housing authority. But I don't want them to be an area. I want them to be part of our community. And my dream is to bring folks together in a way where they don't, we don't see this as where people people live because they can't live anywhere else, but where our friends live. That we're a village and we're going to take care of each other. And I think especially now that we've gone through some a pandemic and it's been really hard on a lot of people, I believe they're looking for an outlet and that the housing authority is a beautiful outlet to express themselves, and get to make more friends. And one last brief question. The housing authority is often seen as an elderly or an aging housing location. It's often seen as a low income housing location. What role does the housing authority play in addressing uh, the uh, mental illness or people afflicted, uh, afflicted, I don't know if that's the right word, uh, with mental illness in providing housing? You mean how do people with mental illness get housing? Sure. Uh, that's a little more complicated because um, you know, we have the Clark House and are you saying that we have mentally ill people living in our housing? I'm asking if the housing authority has a role to play in finding housing or in providing housing. More than likely we do. I don't get to choose. I never know the list of who's coming in. I'm actually not really supposed to know the names of our residents, but just, you know. Okay, um, but but um, I, I do you know if, if you, when we talk about Sherman Gardens, for instance, and Waverly, we've it's not mental illness that anyone has; it's just plain sadness and depression and loneliness that came about by COVID. And um, we actually did plan on having a band out there. We were we were giving them supplies for COVID, the gloves and the masks and that sort of thing, and then we gave them toiletries, but. It, and we are cleaning the rooms with great frequency. The community room gets mopped and cleaned up every day so that they could somewhat co-mingle. But um, yeah, I, I'm not a good answer to that question. I'm so sorry, Raj. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for joining us uh, today. Wait, it's Anne. already done. It's only been 15 minutes. <laughs> Ask me another question. Come on, Franklin. 
Uh, we've been uh, talking with Ann Mann today, who is a candidate for the Belmont Housing Authority. I'd between love your now, vote. <laughs> between now and Election Day, Franklin Tucker, uh, my co-host, and I will be interviewing candidates for townwide positions. Thanks for watching. I'm Roger Colton. We'll talk to you again next time. Bye.